This video is a complete guide to rear derailleurs or rear mechs. So if you've ever wondered how these things work, what all these levers and screws do on them, then stay tuned and I'm going to explain absolutely everything you need to know about rear derailleurs. And if you're new to the channel, do hit that subscribe button. A rear derailleur is also known as a rear mech, and it's basically the mechanical arm at the back of your bike, which helps you change gear. Now it does this by moving the chain onto different cogs of your cassette. Each cog will give you a different feeling of power, effort, and even cadence. The rear derailleur is usually attached to the bike via an extra piece of metal, and this is called a derailleur hanger or a mech hanger. This is usually made from soft metal, so if anything knocks the derailleur, the hanger will break instead of the derailleur or even your bike frame, as these are much more expensive parts to replace. A derailleur is a kind of parallelogram, so if you squeeze these two parts together, it extends and opens up. So when this part is attached to the bike and a cable runs through the two ends up to your gear shifter, uh, every time you pull on that shifter, it pulls the cable through and then pulls these two ends together. So one click on a lever or an index, as we often refer to it as, means that it will pull a certain amount of cable through the ends and move the derailleur a certain amount at the back by the chain rings. The chain runs around the cassette cogs and then is threaded through two cogs on the derailleur itself. Now these are the upper jockey wheel and the lower jockey wheel and sometimes they're known as guide wheels or pulley wheels. Now these need to move really freely in order for the chain to rotate around and for the derailleur to do its job properly. Now, if they seize up, you may be able to bring them back to life with a bit of grease because they're just bearings inside, or sometimes I'd recommend replacing them altogether, which is really easy and something I'd recommend doing if they ever get damaged or the teeth become quite pointy as you don't want your chain to fall off and damage the derailleur itself. Now shifting up moves the chain either up into larger cogs giving you lower gears for an easier feel or shifting down releases the tension on the derailleur and drops the chain onto smaller cogs giving you a harder or a higher gear. Now the shifter knows exactly how much cable to move the derailleur into a new cog. So this is why a shifter needs to be compatible with a derailleur and also a cassette and a chain as well. So a 10 speed shifter, for example, won't move it enough to achieve 12 speed on the rear, for example. So you need a compatible group set for it all to work. Now these two screws together here are called the limit screws and they do exactly that. They just limit the derailleur's movement so it doesn't go too far over the edge of each side of the cassette. Now you have a higher limit screw and this stops the chain from falling off the higher gears and damaging your frame or the smaller cogs. And the lower limit screw stops the chain from falling off the larger gear or the easier gear and into your spokes in your wheel. To remember which is which, the L screw is for the lower gears, or sometimes I like to tell myself the larger gears, and the H screw is for the higher gears, or sometimes I like to think of them as the harder gears, so they're the smaller ones. And now you can tell them apart even if they don't have H and L written on them, because once you start to actuate them, they'll only work on the right side. To set your derailleur's limit screws, the chain needs to be in the right place. So to set up a lower limit screw, you should have your chain in your lower or your larger gears on the cassette nearer the spokes. 
And to set the higher limit screw, you should have your chain on your higher or your hardest gear, which is the smallest one nearer the frame on the cassette. And the limit screws then wind in and out so that it's very close to the derailleur and it stops them moving too far over into the spokes, for example, or too far over into the frame. Now, once these screws are set up, you shouldn't have to touch them ever again. They don't adjust your derailleur's movement or tune the gears in any way. They only limit the movement either side of the cassette. However, if you ever have an incident where you bend your derailleur or your derailleur hanger and you find that the chain keeps falling off of your cassette, you can readjust these screws on the trail to increase the limits and stop it from doing that. Now, once you know that the limit screws come as a pair, then it's easy to remember that the B-tension screw is the other screw that comes out on all on its own over here. Now, this is a screw that opens up the body of the derailleur, and that basically sets your upper jockey wheel so that it's not too close to the cassette, because otherwise it can get tangled or it might even damage the derailleur. Some derailleurs have a mark on the back of them, which tells you where to line up the biggest gear on your cassette to. And some will come with a setup template or something to match the angle of the derailleur. Either way, consult the manual on the derailleur to find the measurements and make sure that that distance is adhered to between the upper jockey wheel and the biggest cassette to make sure you don't damage anything in the future. If you have a lever on your derailleur like this, this is a clutch mechanism that you can switch on and off. Now, a clutch mech simply puts tension on the derailleur to make it harder to move. So when you're riding down trails and your bike's bobbing up and down, the tension will stop the chain from rattling and making a lot of noise and potentially jumping off the gears altogether. Now, the reason we have this as an on and off switch is simply when you turn it off, you will find it a lot easier to manipulate the derailleur either for servicing or for just taking a back wheel out of your bike. Now the clutch under here is also a part of the derailleur that can be serviced and even replaced if it starts to fatigue or not work as well. Some will even allow you to adjust the tension without even removing the casing. It's not a bad idea either to drop a little bit of lube underneath inside the casing from time to time just to keep it running smoothly. Shimano DI2 was first released on mountain bikes in 2009 and it's electronic but not completely wireless. It has cables that help all the parts communicate to one another by binary code, which is just a language that all computers use to perform functions. The benefits of this system is crisp shifting and even the option of automatic shifting on front derailleurs if you want to avoid any gear overlapping or overstressing of your chains. And the system needs to be charged up by a main socket, roughly about every 2,000 to 3,000 kilometers. So you'll need to get your bike inside and you'll need to plug it in to do this. Now, SRAM, released in 2019, and they released the AXS or the AXIS system, ETAP for road, Eagle is for mountain bikes. And it is a completely wireless system, so it has no cables, and batteries can even be taken off the back, and you can purchase spares, and even carry them around with you if you're afraid of running out of charge. Now, these need to be charged roughly every 60 riding hours, However, a completely wireless system like this does come with a price tag. An AXS or an AXIS derailleur is around about 660 pounds in comparison to a DI2 derailleur, which is about 190. So the future is probably more electric. 
um, I'm afraid to say. They are customizable in terms of how the gears actuate and existing apps that pair to them are already gathering info on how you use them and offering feedback on how you could better use them going forward. Semi-automatic shifting with a front derailleur already exists with Shimano systems and fully automated gear shifting is already available on SRAM and Bosch compatible e-mountain bikes as well, meaning it actually changes gear for you based on things like how slow your cadence is or how much power you're using without you even needing to press a lever. Now this could become an, maybe a non-mandatory option on normal mountain bikes in the future. And I think it's gonna be a bit of a Marmite product if that happens. Now in the world of road bikes, they're doing away with top end mechanical group sets already. And now the top end is simply just electronic. Um, I think this seems sad, but it will probably eventually bring the price down on electric group sets anyway. And while I love mechanical right now, I do remember when I thought buttons on mobile phones were just fine. <laughs> so things change. Also, I think we'll see far more aftermarket add-ons. Companies like Muckoff and Ceramic Speed are already selling kits that upgrade the lower part of your derailleur with oversized jockey wheels, for example. And the oversizing gives you better chain line and smoother shifting. And the larger ceramic coated bearings offer pretty much unparalleled lack of friction, which means you can pedal faster with less resistance and they last longer as well. Personally, I hope that this popular add-on becomes more of a standard feature in the future, to be honest. Well, hopefully you found that useful. Do give us a thumbs up if you watched all the way through to the end and don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Thanks for watching.